Hello, and welcome to our next Hype Bite. I'm Kelly Campbell, Digital Content Marketing Director at BDS, and today I'm excited to chat with a renowned leader and expert in in-store product engagement marketing, interactive retail displays, and augmented reality, Trevor Sumner, who is also currently CEO of Perch. Let's bring him in to talk a little bit more about he and his how he and his company have transformed to meet the buying journey. So let's bring him on in. Hello, how Trevor. are you? How's it how going? are you? I'm good. Good. Well, welcome to our Hype Bite interview. I'm so excited to have you on to talk about all the amazing things that Perch is doing and get some insights from you. Great. Great. Awesome. Happy to be here. Awesome. Well, tell us a little bit about Perch. What does Perch do? Enlighten us. <laughs> so Perch provides interactive uh, retail touchscreens uh, in store. And what's cool about them is they use computer vision to detect which products people are touching at the shelf. So you pick up a Band-Aid, it says, oh, you've got cuts. Let me sell you Neos 4. And you pick up a purse at Kate Spade. It opens up and tells you how to configure that purse with polka dots and stripes and all that type of stuff. And so you know, I think at a base level, you might think of us as digital signage, but the truth is a digital signage is pretty terrible, right? Like I think of it as almost like the banner ad of physical retail. It's blinky text saying, maybe it's Maybelline, maybe it's Maybelline. And it doesn't actually really help me do shopping. I think of what we do is not really digital signage so much as product and digital engagement marketing. Our goal is to really think about shopping as connecting people and products and when somebody picks up a product in store, there's all this content that's relevant to making that decision about whether this product's right for you. It's ratings, it's re it's reviews, it's videos, it's what other products goes with this product. And you know, we talk about how stores are this amazing place for product discovery, and yet all of that digital content is not in stores. It's like the digital you know wasteland. It's barren, and so. You know, 87% of people start their product journeys and research online because that's where the content is. What we're really trying to do is marry the best of both digital shopping with all its rich content, its information, and physical shopping, the wealth of products in front of you, the ability to discover each one, to touch, to feel, to visualize it. And we think that by doing that, we can really kind of create a differentiated experience that helps brands connect with shoppers in new and interesting ways helps retailers drive category lift, drive some of their omni-channel offerings, so converting their in-store shoppers to sign up for loyalty programs, to you know give up information, uh, you know, scan QR codes to get to your cashless checkout, et cetera. And then obviously it's great for shoppers because they have a great shopping experience. Yeah, that's really what matters at the end of the day, right? Is the best shopping experience possible. So I want to dive into the customer journey and how much it has evolved. And it's evolved so rapidly uh, with digital transformation and everything that has happened over the last year. How are you guys seeing it at Perch? Um, how are you seeing that customer journey evolve? Can you tell us a little bit about how you're sort of approaching it now? Yeah, so, you know, it's it's been very interesting to kind of see, you know, analysts talk about the retail apocalypse and the end of physical retail. It's like, really, we had a pandemic and physical retail had a flat year. Like, like during a pandemic, people risked their lives to go to physical retail. Yep. Because, you know, people don't realize that shopping is a social experience. And e-commerce is great as like uh, for buying, but, you know, physical retail still maintain it still maintains an 85% share uh, because it's so good at shopping and discovery and, you know, that serendipity. And so, you know, it's been interesting to see during the pandemic certain categories. And, and this is kind of really, you know, it's hard to talk about any one type of shopper journey because, you know, last year apparel got crushed. Pets did phenomenally. Grocery and store did phenomenally. Um, and so it really depends by category. But what we know is that increasingly, you know, our shoppers are digitally native. They're often on their mobile phones. They demand digital content. They want in-store experiences. They want good value. And they want the right message at the right time, right? And so, you know, I, I think it's been really interesting to see how retailers are normalizing their underlying data structures to have inventory information and product information. 
and have that available in new ways so that you can buy online, pick up in store, or you know, you can do, you know, go in store and have it delivered. And so there are all those different ways that we've kind of fragmented the buying process from the fulfillment process. So mm-hmm. digital used to mean I buy it online, it gets shipped to my door. And yeah. now digital can mean, I don't know, I buy it online and I pick it up in store or I, I buy it online and then I you know, you make scheduled appointments. Um, it could mean I'm in store and I'm engaging digitally with the screen and then I finish buying it online and having it delivered. And so you know, there's a lot of talk of kind of like omni-channel and omni-channel has kind of, kind of become a little bit more out of favor and turned into unified commerce. Yep. But ultimately what this means is you've got to meet the customer where they are. Absolutely. You've got to understand, you know, what they're doing at that moment in time. Okay, great. I'm buying online, I'm picking up in store, or I'm at Kohl's, I'm returning an Amazon package. What's the right experience at this very moment to maximize the experience, to maximize the revenue, to maximize the value for everybody involved? And so super exciting time that we've accelerated all these different touch points, all these different interaction modes. And at the core of it is you know, kind of data about products, about inventories, about customers, and how we can connect them in new and interesting ways. Absolutely. At BDS, we like to call it connected commerce, but at the end of the day, it really boils down to, you know, omnichannel is is sort of morphing, like you said. It's, It's sort of going out of favor, but not really, like it's still there, but it's just morphing into something bigger and better. And what we're seeing is that it's really boiling down to one channel that matters, which you've talked about a lot is the customer. What does that buying experience look like? What is that journey for each individual customer, no matter where they are and where they're planning to engage with that brand at any time, right? So how is Perch sort of approaching that um, not only at the retail level, but beyond. Is yeah, there so anything you can share? I really like the idea of connected commerce, right? Mm-hmm. Because I think that you know, people don't fully appreciate that there are three people involved, or three entities involved in retail. Yeah. There's the brand, there's the retailer, and the shopper. And they all interact with each other, right? And so what I like about connected commerce is, again, we think about you know, this notion of connectivity is fundamental to shopping. And and this is part of why e-commerce kind of, you know, kind of falls down, right? Which is like, people are like, oh, imagine a world where you can order anything and it just arrives at your door. And it's like, (laughs) great, you just had that last year. How much did that suck, huh? (laughs) That was terrible. That was soulless, that lacked entertainment. I bought Christmas presents on Amazon for my nephew. I didn't really pick them out. I didn't hold them. I didn't know what they looked like. I didn't wrap them. I didn't send them. And I and I wasn't there when he opened them. And I don't know if he's using them. And like, it's very transactional and cold. Yes. And so I think about what connectivity really means when you think about connected commerce. And I think about the easy one is, you know, products and products and brands, therefore, and shoppers. Like, how do you give them the right information? Right, so you go to a store and you want to pick a deodorant, a beauty product. Let's take skincare. Skincare, okay, there are a hundred products in front of me. What's the right one for me? Right, like what am I supposed to read? A bunch of four four point print? Um, (laughs) And there are all kinds of tools in digital. There's information, there's ratings and reviews and that type of stuff. But for example, you know, we're working with Johnson & Johnson to bring their Neutrogena uh, three, Skin360 three tool, which takes a picture of your face, analyzes it, and says, you know, Trevor's got a couple of wrinkles up here in his forehead, and maybe he's got some <laughs> spots or whatever Trevor has, right? And here's the right products for him, right? So really helping shoppers connect with brands. Now, that's one part of the triangle. Yeah, it's also about connecting shoppers with retailers, right? So now brands can come through with these solutions, and like Macy's, for example, You go in, you pick up a fragrance, it all pops a bunch of QR codes and other things to explore. You can sign up for their loyalty rewards right then and there, helping Macy's with first party data. You get discounts, you get a free sample, depending on what you buy. You can access cashierless checkout. You make the whole shopping process better and say, you know what? I wanna shop, I can buy this 
Dolce & Gabbana fragrance online or anywhere, but I want to do it at Macy's because it provides me the right information. It's, it's, it's with a sales associate, helps guides me. It's, it's got my loyalty. It builds a connection between me and the retailer. Yeah. And then I think the other area that I think a lot of people don't think about enough, and this is usually relegated to kind of like supply chain, is how brands and retailers can connect in deeper ways. And that's that last piece of that triangle. And what we're finding is one of the cool things about Perch is we collect data about what people are touching on the planogram and what products are converting, and we compare that to sales data. And so what that gives is an opportunity for retailers and brands to collaborate around data, around performance, even around some of the experience of like, how does a brand help drive the retailer's loyalty program or, or those type of things? Yeah. And we find them starting to collaborate in new ways. We see retailers give brands you know, free end cap space. We see them talking about data for planogram and merchandising optimization. And studies shows that when, when brands and retailers collaborate more closely, they typically see four to eight percent more sales lift. Wow. Yeah. So that's it's 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 really thinking about how these technologies can change the way that we work together. Because traditionally retailers are very protective of data and their customer and what's happening. Mm -hmm. And I think we're beginning to realize that if we open that up, I mean a retailer who provides feedback on content optimization and merchandising optimization and marketing optimization to its brands, that's a really powerful value proposition. More trade dollars will come in, the retailer's profit, the brand's profit, and the shopper ultimately benefits. And we're all connected in better ways. And so, you know, I love this idea of connected commerce. I'm gonna steal that a little bit. <laughs> awesome. I just, I love the way that you talked about data and I think, we constantly think of, of data driven and the data economy and how this is going to drive everything. But if it doesn't connect together in the right way, you could have as much data as you want, right? We, we have mobile phones now tracking our moves. We have um, all these different data sources. But how do you then translate all of that data into the journey for that individual customer? Maybe you can sort of talk a little bit about that and how you're sort of tying things together. I know you mentioned some of the things that you're doing at Perch, but um, I know data is huge, but using it in the right way gives you more power, right? Absolutely. So I think the challenge with the internet in general has always been there's much more data than information, right? And so you really have to be thoughtful just because you can measure it doesn't mean you should spend the time to. And in fact, once you start measuring it and storing it, then somebody feels compelled to look at it. And ultimately it could be a waste of time, money, resource, et cetera. So we really focus on like the shopper journey, right? So I think about it as a funnel, right? Like right now retailers have store traffic information, which they probably don't share with brands. So the brands buy like IRI data or Nielsen data. Yeah. And then they've got the bottom of the funnel sales, right? And if you think about that, like, imagine like you were managing a website, right? Like if just here's how many unique people walked in the door and here's the sales at the end. We have no idea what people clicked on on the website. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what physical retail is. It's a giant black box and lack of information and data. And so, you know, we think about it like we can start saying, well, okay, here's how many people were in the category and, and around the unit. Here's how many people showed up to the display. Here's how many people picked up each one of the products. I think of it as like online, you can click on a product. Now we can instrument that click in store when people pick up a product and say, I'm interested in this product. And so now we're instrumenting all the clicks and all the paths and now we can see like conversion rates. So for example, you know, Johnson & Johnson they, um, they had a beauty end cap at Meyer Supermarkets and they had Jennifer Aniston for Aveeno and Kerry Washington for Neutrogena and they had clean and clear on the bottom shelf and they didn't have a spokesperson. So they said, Perch, with all your amazing data, right? Like, can you tell us how much, how much it hurts us not to have a spokesperson? Like, how much does it hurt our conversion rate? And so we could look at the pickup of a product to screen for digital engagement and wow. the pickup of a product to sales and measure it compared to Neutrogena Vino. And this is what blew their mind. The Instagram influencers outperformed Jennifer Aniston and Kerry Washington. And they said, oh, oh my wow. God, let's relaunch just with Instagram influencers and, and you know, see what happens. And we saw a 10% increase in sales, 10%. Wow. And 
The truth is it's even more nuanced than that. It's likely that Jennifer Aniston and Kerry Washington appeal to, you know, a Gen Xer like me because I'm old. But Instagram influencers probably appeal to millennial audiences and Gen Z even more. And so we can actually do demographic segmentation and say, here's the right content for the right demographic to draw and get real time feedback is what drives the conversion rate from pickup to screen, pickup to sales, all of that. And so like it's the data that actually helps you make decisions, not just on content, yeah. like merchandising, packaging, which of your products do people pick up and put down because they don't see what they need to see. The sky's the limit with that. That's amazing. Yeah. I think, yeah, not only are you sort of combining all these different data points together, but then using those to give back to the brands to make better business decisions and more highly targeted ones. I think of all the things that we can do with e-commerce. And I think that's why it's so enticing to lean on the e-commerce, you know, wave a bit. It's because you do have all those data points that you can look at and then A, B test and do all these different things with. But then on the retail side of things or the in-person side, it's a lot harder to do that. So the fact that you guys are bridging that gap is pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and speaking of data points, we, we scheduled this in the middle of, uh, a lightning storm. So I'm on the 43rd oh, no. floor. So if you hear some rain background, I mean, it's pretty brutal out there. You might see some flashes for which uh, oh, I apologize. No. But, uh, um, yeah, no, but that's absolutely right. And, you know, the re reality is with platforms like BDS uh, or Perch, we now can start deploying sensors in a lot more different places. And yeah. the goal is to really be thoughtful about, okay, how am I going to use this data? In what way? Right? Like, we look at the pickup to sales conversion rate of every fragrance at the Macy's fragrance bar and say, okay, well, which packaging is working? And like, what's the value of an ornate bottle like a Carolina Herrera versus an Armani C? Yeah. And we can start providing real data back to brands about their packaging, about their planograms. Like, here's the other thing. We've been putting products on the shelf in the same way for decades. What if it turns out that most of our assumptions aren't actually quite right? Yeah. So, you know, for another product, uh, another company that we work with in the, in the pet industry, they were convinced, as everybody's convinced, that eye level, the top shelf, is the most important place on the planogram where you yeah. put your products. <laughs> we actually showed them that the edges were even more valuable than the top shelf. Yeah. And they were like, oh my God. Like, we got we to socialize this that data. the yeah. whole industry. <laughs> Absolutely. But... You know, right now, data has been more kind of art than science. They, they, they put it to, you know, five or 10 stores. They observe some people. But now you can actually have real data across geographies uh, and, and see what's actually happening in store. And so this giant black box that was the store is, I, I think, the next great frontier of data collection. And when we find out what's actually happening, it's going to be a lot different than what we think is supposed to happen. Absolutely. Very, very interesting. So as we sort of wrap up today, I would love to know your tips. And I know other leaders out there would like to know this as well. But how can uh, leaders at businesses, executives, really better navigate this new buying journey? What, what would you say to them if they asked you and you're sitting next to them? <laughs> God, it's hard. It's hard. What we're talking about is wholesale overhaul about the way we think about the customer journey. It's about you know e-commerce groups being somehow morphed now into in-store groups, and they don't even talk the same language, right? Yeah. When you talk about conversion rates and you know like this, this is you know click type New language. <laughs> it's a totally different language. I mean, I remember you know ten years ago, I was trying to sell local SEO into retailers and explaining that if you optimize your performance on Google Maps, more people will come into the store. And they would say, that's talk to the e-commerce people. Yeah. <laughs> talk to the e-commerce people and they're like, this local SEO doesn't drive any more traffic to e-commerce. Well, let me refer you back to the store people. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just like, you know, the joke was the store people couldn't even spell SEO, right? And you know, on one hand that's kind of funny, right? Like it's funny to say, but the reality is there's so much disruption happening that one of the hardest problems is to coordinate all the different people and to get them on the same page as to 
the magnitude of the transformation possible that when you start instrumenting these things, when you start implementing technology. And I think this is where 2020, you know, a lot of people said 2020 was like the great catalyst. You know, people deployed five, 10 years of technology in six months time frame. And as you're seeing from earnings, I mean, the earnings are off the charts. They're be people are beating earnings by 60%, 30%, 50%. And, you know, uh, you're seeing growth in sales and earnings from 2019 pre-pandemic in the 19, 20, 25% range. And the ROI from those investments of normalizing product information, inventory information, sales information, of sharing that in an open platform so that you can rapidly build applications like buy online, pick up in store, and yeah. kind of omni-channel delivery, omni-channel pickup, omni-channel marketing, you know, data capture around the customer. These are gonna provide such deep ROIs that the question, the next question is, how do we transform the organization so everybody can participate in that value creation? And, you know, it's hard. Like when I think about the future of digital signage in store, my big worry is retailers are gonna basically put up you know, screens that are going to be programmatically bought by brands. And it's just going to be like, maybe it's Maybelline, maybe it's Maybelline, maybe it's Maybelline. <laughs> and I, look, that's going to be profitable and brands are going to buy a ton of it. I think there's going to be a multi-billion dollar shift of spend from online to in-store, a yeah. lot of it from media buyers and advertising people. But where are the merchandisers? Where are the category managers? Yeah. Where are the shopper marketing people? How do we, you know, go from digital over on that wall, trying to distract me and interrupt my shopping process to bringing digital to my shopping process and yeah. interjecting it in a way that is helpful and not interruptive, that is contextual. And that's what we're trying to do at Perch. But it means trademark trade dollars and shopper marketers starting to think like digital marketers. It means digital yeah. marketers starting to think like, you know, salespeople and trade marketers and you know, these worlds that have been separate, you know, just like kind of going from separate channels to omni-channel to connected commerce, within the organization, we have to connect those dots together. And that's not easy. And that takes no. time. And uh, uh, I think, I think you know, what COVID taught us is just go for it, right? Yeah. Like make some big bets, stop doing small trials, try and make some big bets, get real ROI, ROIs, real learnings, and and do things that are going to shake up the industry. Make some bets. Make make you know make some changes that are meaningful to the business. And I think you're seeing that in the cultures of Walmart, of Target, the new management at Bed Bath and Beyond. Uh, even Macy's is really kind of pushing hard. And everybody likes to kind of you know denigrate some of the laggards. But I think I think there's a lot of interesting innovation afoot. And for that, I'm really excited. That is amazing. Um, gosh, so many insights. I am just so excited about this conversation and totally agree. It's almost like we have connected commerce on the consumer side, but we also need to have the connected business to power everything behind it. So, um, gosh, I just appreciate you coming on, Trevor, and giving us so many amazing insights. And I hope that the uh, the lightning storm doesn't get you over there. <laughs> Are you seeing the lightning? Because it's flashing over it. here. <laughs> I did see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, you, you know, can't control the weather at home, right? I'm actually on the 47th <laughs> floor, so I'm in the clouds, literally. Oh, well, that's amazing. Thank you so much for joining our Hype Bite today. And we hope to have you on again. This is wonderful. I, I'm happy to come back uh, on, uh, on again. And um, I think, you know, what you guys are doing is really important. And, you know, one of the hardest things to do is scale these technologies in the real world. Yeah. And, you know, having partners like BDS, having the technology that you guys bring to bear and also the service network is just so critical. Um, you know, technology, you know, big dreamers like me, you know, it, you know, going from bits and bytes to real world devices, real world things that need to be installed, maintained. You know, we really depend on 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 great partners such as yourself to to make our dreams uh, a reality. And uh, uh, I think, as I said, I think it's the next great frontier. So we're happy that yeah. uh, that you're a part of it and making this you know grand wave of innovation happen. Awesome. Well, thanks, and right back at you as well, and with Perch. So, with that, thank you so much, Trevor, for coming on, and we'll talk soon. Thanks so much. Bye. <laughs> thanks. 
Well, as we wrap up here, keep an eye out for more Hype Bites to come throughout the rest of the year. Just like we interviewed with Trevor, it was an amazing, amazing story that he's telling. And as always, make sure to join us live for the Hype Hour every single quarter. Have a great day.